As long as I can remember, I've always loved things in miniature, whether that's modeling or building stuff, making little dioramas. Um, but I think I was really attracted to the praying mantis as pets because they kind of remind me of like little creatures that are fairly kind of humanoid. Like they have faces, they have arms, um, and they're responsive and reactive to you. And they're pretty fun to play with. Um, what's interesting about this species, the orchid mantis, is that I got it as part of a pair. And it's a bit of a gamble because you might get a male or you might get a female. This is a female, so it's much larger. It's bright pink, it's really cool, and they live a pretty long time. This one's about six months old. Um, it came with a male. The male died after three months, after reaching adulthood. Um, I think a lot of that is so the males and females from the same generation won't breed. The males will breed with last year's females, and these females will breed with next year's males. They're a little bit more expensive if you're going to collect them or find them from a breeder. But they're really fun to keep. They're a little more temperamental. Just make sure you watch the temperature and the humidity. Um, and they become a pretty great pet. I feed mine crickets just for how much easier it is. Um, but this is a species that really prefers flying insects. If you can keep flies. My girlfriend has been pretty clear that I am not allowed to keep fly pupa in the freezer. So I can't. So my refrigerator does not have any bugs in it. It's been kind of a challenge to get her acclimated to, to the bug collection, but over time I think she's pretty cool with it. Uh, she especially likes it when when my bugs die of old age, I, I I'll frame them. And she's been fun going to Michael's and buying frames and stuff with. The orchid mantids I always think of as one of the more popular ones because of the cool like lobes on their legs and things. Um, what a lot of people don't know about this species is they think it's supposed to be camouflaged uh, in with the flowers. So it's hiding among flowers, jumps out and eats the bugs. But the truth is, is that their camouflage looking like a flower is so effective that nectar-eating insects will prefer them over flowers. So these are bugs that will stand out in the open by themselves, try to attract whatever kind of flying insects they can, and eat them. So it's a, it's a form of very aggressive mimicry that I think is kind of unique to them. I don't know if there's a lot of other species that look attractive to their prey to just lure them in. So very cool species. Um, a little more difficult to keep. Definitely a little more expensive. Um, and a bit of a gamble when you do get them. Sometimes people will worry about uh, praying mantis if they'll pinch you or bite you. Their mouths are very, very tiny. Um, they don't really kill their prey by biting it like a lion would or poisoning it like a wasp would. They kind of kill their prey by just eating them to death. So their mouth is really more like a tiny trash compactor. They just kind of slowly chew on it. Um, so the mouths aren't big enough to hurt you. If they pinch you, they maybe but they're really really careful about not grabbing onto something that's too big for them so you're really not going to be a target for them uh there's some species like the giant asian that might be big enough to try but i've never i've never experienced that i've never had one of these hurt me uh, i'm not convinced that they even can um for for such like a a creature known for being super ravenous and aggressive they're pretty docile and they're kind of calculated. They'll really size up prey and take their time. And they really only jump out and grab it when they think they can take it. So sometimes people ask me, what, what do the praying mantis eat? Anything they can grab. So anything they think they can t take down. Um, I'm going to show you some of my other species, which are ghost mantis. Ghost mantis act very different from what you think a mantis would act like. They're much more docile and they're kind of timid. And they really focus more on their camouflage and trying not to be noticed. While the orchid mantis is trying to be seen by its prey, the ghost mantis is really trying to be not seen by its predators. So they're trying to look like kind of like a dried leaf or maybe a stick in the wind. So they'll kind of do a little dance. You'll see them shake back and forth. Um, especially when I'm out at work and I come home, all the mantis will kind of turn their heads and look at me when I, when I get home. 
they all start dancing. They, they don't know if I'm a threat or not. They just want me to think they're just a twig in the breeze. Very interesting. This is something the mantis do too that's really interesting. They preen themselves like a cat. So they're always cleaning off their mandibles, they're cleaning off their feet, they're cleaning off their raptorial legs. Um, I think a lot of it is just cleanliness is important for them. And for them to survive in the wild, they need to make sure that their feet and their hands are healthy. And I always think it's funny because it's kind of like having a little cat. I'm super allergic to cats. It's one of the reasons I'm collecting bugs because my landlord said no dog. So I am ended up with kind of this weird middle ground where I have kind of a dog, cat, tiny creature that I can have in my, in my home. So it's been a lot of fun. I like to miss them if I take them out, if they get thirsty, if they've been overexerted a little bit from playing. They'll drink the water droplets so you can see them kind of walk around and suck them up. It's really cool. This is one of my ghost mantis. I'm pretty sure this is a female. I'm not 100%. Pretty sure it's a female. Um, ghost mantis are my favorite species. They were the first ones I collected. People told me that they were smaller so I could feed them smaller prey because I wasn't really ready to buy big chunky cockroaches and crickets to feed them. Um, they said they were really hardy and pretty fun species to play with. They're not as outgoing as other species. Uh, they're pretty scared. They also really like smaller prey. They don't really want anything bigger than their head. So you can feed them fruit flies longer and fruit flies are really easy to feed. You can see them in the background there um, because they're so small and they breed really fast. So you're really not gonna run out of them for a long time and they don't take up much space. They don't make noise, they don't smell. Uh, crickets and flies and other things are kind of more of a problem. <laughs> So, uh, if you're going to get a, your first species and you want something that's cool looking and easy to keep, I definitely suggest the ghosts. If you're going to get something that you just want to be big and fun, you can take out, probably a giant Asian or a Chinese is probably the best species. This is the spiny flower mantis. These are a really cool species. These are the first ones I've ever had. I've always kind of skipped them. They're really cool looking, great color, um, but they're not real big. So I figured I wanted to try some bigger species. So I've done um, like dead leaf mantis and some of the other bigger ones. But these have been really fun and I think they got really cool coloring. So I don't regret it at all. They've also so far have been really easy to keep. I haven't had any trouble. I've had these same five mantis for months and months. Um, and they're all still really healthy. So I'm, I'm glad about that. This one's... Uh, Still pretty young. I think it's only about three months old. And I got these when they were really tiny. So it's grown a bit, but it's going to get a little bigger. It'll probably double that size when it's full grown and it'll have wings. Um, yeah, it kind of reminds me of Fruit Strike Gum, if you remember that from, uh, I guess, 30 years ago. Kind of that, that uh, almost birthday cake where the confetti sprinkles are baked into the the cake itself. Really cool species, um, kind of in the middle as far as being outgoing or aggressive. I've been able to feed them crickets. The ghosts are about the same size as them and they won't take them yet. Um, so that shows that they're definitely more in line with <laughs> the more aggressive species. Um, really fun, yeah. I would suggest those too. I think if you want to start collecting and you want to get in the hobby, I think uh, a spiny flower mantis might be a, a good pick. Here I am feeding it. Um, uh, I, you have to be careful with overfeeding. You don't want to give it too much. Um, so I'm doing crickets and fruit flies for a little bit until it gets a little bigger. I don't want it to just gorge itself and then its abdomen might might get a little too big and it might actually rupture if they eat too much um this also keeps it safe if it decides it's full and wants to molt the fruit flies aren't going to hurt it 
Um, if I leave a cricket running around inside of its jar, it could, you know, mess with it or damage it or make it fall, which would be a huge problem. So mist molts are one of the most common ways you're going to lose one of your mantis. So make sure that the jar they're in is graduating along with their size and make sure that you are cognizant of like what kind of uh, prey insects are inside of there. Don't leave too much in there um, and try not to leave it overnight. Um, this is something else I like to do with my pet mantis. Outside of just eating other bugs, they really like honey. So sometimes I'll give them honey as a treat. Um, honey's not hard to come by, just get natural honey. Um, I don't know if it matters if it's local because the, the species of mantis aren't local. I don't actually know what kind of honey they would eat um, in, in the case of the orchid mantis in Malaysia. But this has been something that hasn't been a problem for them and they seem to really like it. And I've noticed that the mantis live longer, a little healthier if they have a little bit of honey uh, once in a while. And it, yeah, it feels like giving them a treat. So I'm a big fan of it. Uh, if you want to get into the mantis hobby, I really suggest starting with an easier species. Uh, make sure the place you're keeping them in is big enough and not too small, but also not too big because you want to make sure the prey insects you put in there, uh, whatever captivity cage you put them in, um, they're not getting too far away because the mantis doesn't want to hunt after them. It really wants to wait till stuff comes to it. So as an arboreal species, something that's kind of skinnier and taller is probably the best thing for them. That gives them room to molt and they'll live longer and healthier. So I just wanted to do an update of what I'm doing with my bugs. I haven't been keeping up with my bug videos and I felt bad. And for all the people that follow these these videos, I feel like I owe it to you. Thank you so much. Um, like and subscribe if you're interested and I'll keep making more. Thank you.